Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to be building etch sketch project of the Odin project, okay? This will be basically how it's going to look like in the end of the project. I'm going to teach you how can you do all of this page. So we're going to learn in this project how to work with the HTML, CSS, Bootstrap and JavaScript. So it's an amazing opportunity for you to start learning how to work with functions in JavaScript and make things work this way, okay? Like you can see in here. Besides that, you're going to learn as well how to use with how to use git github and sublime merge so this video will be pretty complete okay So now we're gonna start building our etch sketch, okay? Like we saw previously, we're gonna do something like that, okay? Before we start anything, we need to make our repository. So here, we're gonna click in new, we're gonna create here the Odin in our GitHub. Odin uh, etch uh, sketch, for example. If you don't remember, if you don't have a GitHub account, remember you can watch the first video, okay, where we explain how can you do all of this. It's here in the description. Okay, so now we click here in this green button, code. We click in this part and we go to our VS Code. So now in here, in our repos directory, we're gonna do git clone and we're gonna paste this link that we sent. And here, we're gonna see the Odin Edge sketch, okay? Now we can enter, so cd Odin Edge uh, sketch, okay? And now we're gonna start creating some files. So I'm gonna create a one file, I'm gonna do touch index.html, okay? Touch uh, styles.css because we're gonna use it and touch main.js. So we're gonna work in the three files, CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. And I want to already put this in my repository. So we're gonna start, uh, we're gonna practice a little bit how GitHub works. So to do this, we're gonna open up the Sublime Merge, okay? I already mentioned the Sublime Merge before, but it's really good in here, so you can open up. So basically here in Sublime Merge, we can keep track of the changes we did in our file and kind of submit or not to our GitHub. So this way we can keep track of every change we're, we're doing, okay? So right now we can see the untracked files because we just did this index.html, main.js, and styles.css. So we can stage all, okay? And so we have to click twice and we're gonna commit. So create main files, okay? And we're gonna commit. So basically here in this tree, we can keep track of the history of all the changes we're doing in our project. It's really good because we can kind of control the things that we're doing and we can check. Oh, so if something ha uh, happened that it broke our code, we can revert and go back to the previous stage. Okay, so this is basically it. Now we're gonna start working. I'm gonna open up the file and we're gonna start the project. So now this is our main file. Okay, we don't have anything, but we're gonna start populating. So let's see the project. Basically, we're gonna start creating the 16x 16 grid of squares divs, okay? And we're gonna do all of this using CSS grid. So it's going to be really nice because we're gonna uh, have a board for creating where we're gonna draw in our edge sketch, okay? But we have to make all this site look nicer like we saw previously, okay? So let's start implementing this. Here it will be our empty file and I'm gonna start writing. So first in our index, I'm gonna use here the doc type. We need to say what is the type of our file. It's an HTML and here we have the body, uh, sorry, the head, okay. So here I'm gonna give a title for our project and it will be H uh, sketch, okay. And what is this title? If you take a look in here, we have index.html, right? We have here index.html, but if I refresh, now we change the title of the tab, okay? So this is the title me. Then we're gonna create a link to our CSS file. So here, link rel equals to style sheet and the href that is gonna, we're going to say that we're gonna use styles.css. All right, and then we need the script to say where is the source of our JavaScript. So it's main.js, okay? 
and that's it so now everything it's made made here now i'm going to create the body so everything that is visual and what i want in our body i'm going to have a main div uh sorry first i'm going to have an h1 and we're going to say h uh h a sketch for example then i'm going to have a div and this div i'm going to give a class here for header for example and what we're going to have in the header we're going to have the message so here i'm going to say for example an h6 saying select the size okay and we're gonna have a button to select the size i'm gonna give here the button uh, i'm gonna leave this button empty and i'm gonna see here select okay this button here why we need this button because we're gonna see in the edge sketch we need a button choose properly select the size adjust the size of the squares okay like we can see in here we're gonna use a button okay and once we click the button it's gonna show a pop-up asking the number of squares that we want so here i'm gonna use i'm gonna create this button i'm gonna give an id equals to pop-up for example okay then we're gonna have a div class equals to container okay and this container will be where we're gonna write the board okay where we're gonna draw things inside so i'm gonna leave this way and finally i'm gonna have a div class equals to footer where i'm gonna put the buttons okay so here i'm gonna put a button that will be equals to an idea i won't give an idea here but it will give us the color we're gonna select black for the color or we're gonna select random okay random or we're gonna erase the board so button erase actually reset right reset is a good name so if we take a look in here let's see what we have so far if i refresh now we have all of this but it doesn't look so nice right so we can start working with some things the first thing i want to do is we can use something called bootstrap okay and this bootstrap is really good because it already gave us some templates of some styling that we can add in our code so we don't need to work with hard css we can uh, actually already work with here for example if we go here to documents and we search for a button okay let's see why it's important if we search for a button we can implement these types of button only using the glass the class btn btn primary for example or class btn btn secondary so basically we can choose we can use one of this styling only use the class so the css is already made for us okay and this will be exactly what we're gonna do so to use it first here in docs if we click in docs we need to install we need to make a link to our code the same thing as we have when we are working with css okay so for example here in documentation we're going to click in css copy and we're going to put here in the top of our in our head okay and we will be able to use the pre-made buttons that we have available for example for the first button i want to use this danger here this red button so we search here for the button where we have danger and we don't need to copy everything we just need to copy the class okay so we can get this class danger then let's see what happens if i put this in here inside the button and i save it and now if we take a look at the project now the button looks pretty similar to what we saw okay btn btn select and we can do the same for these other buttons okay so for the button that is black i'm gonna use this dark class btn btn dark okay here for the random i'm gonna use this warning for example but you can choose all right this is not standard so here i'm gonna in the random i'm gonna use the warning and for the reset i'm gonna use the primary here so primary okay and let's try it out so if i refresh we're gonna see these buttons change okay so things are looking nicer now we can put everything in the middle and start organizing the same way as we saw before so what we can do we're going to go back here and we're gonna use some of the divs for example in the body i want to put the body everything in the middle of the content so here body i'm gonna say display flex okay justify content center and align item center and also i want to say the flex direction that is a column okay so if we do these changes everything will be in the middle right now now i want to put the select size and the bottom in the same row so we're going to manipulate this div in here this uh this header div okay so now we're going to use here the div header class header dot header I'm gonna say display flex, flex direction, I wanna say row, 
And I want to put just if, let's see what we have so far if I use this way. So if I refresh, now they are in a row. We can make them all in the same vertical alignment. So here, justify content center. And let's see if I use justify content center, they didn't change. Actually, it's align items. So we're going to say align item center. And you're gonna say now the text will be in the middle of the button and we can create a space in between them so i'm gonna give a width here of 500 pixels and i'm gonna put justify content space between and you're gonna see the magic happening so now the space between or we can use space around let's see space around i think it will be a little bit better so it will create a space in between the message and in here. I think 500 is too much. I'm going to change to 400. Okay. And it's pretty much that we have in here. Now I'm going to work with these buttons. Okay. We can do the same, putting everything in a row. They are actually, they are already in a row. If we say the, if we see here the footer, but we can make sure that they are in a row. So here we're going to say display flex, flex direction row. Oops. We can say here, justify content space between the width we can say that it's 500 pixel and align items center so let's see if we fix in here now they have this space around okay so now we need to worry about the border and all the magic will start in the border okay i was just planning to do the html and the css first to make it nicer okay so now let's work with the border so basically what we have to do first we need to use this container okay and i'm gonna give a style for this container so dot container i'm gonna give a width of 500 pixels and a height of 500 pixels as well and i also gonna use the display grid okay because we're gonna use the grid CSS to make it work the way we want. Uh, we can't see, but do you see that now we have this space in here? I'm gonna actually put a border so we can see the space that we're gonna work. Okay, so border solid black. And if we take a look, this is the square that we're doing. I think it's too much. What just happened? Let me double check and I'll be right back. Okay, so I fixed it here and the problem was that we were using the word container, but container is a word that exists in Bootstrap, so we cannot use because it already has some properties. So I changed here to board, okay? And here now we have a squared board. The final touch that we can do is giving a margin, right? In the header and in the footer. So for example, in the header, I'm gonna give a margin bottom of 20 pixels. And in the footer, I'm gonna give a margin top of 20 pixels as well okay so if i refresh we're gonna see now a space in between here the buttons okay so it looks pretty nice all right now we can start working with the magic of this project so before we do this i'm gonna submit all the changes and one thing that is nice is that in here we can see uh the the sublime merge show us the big differences that we did in the code okay so do you see here this green light it's saying that all of this was were new were added so we can stage all and I'm gonna put in here uh, styling the page HTML and CSS and bootstrap okay then after committing these two files now we're gonna work with JavaScript okay so now we're gonna work in this project so I'm gonna open up here the main.js okay and basically what we're gonna have in here. First, let's test if the file is connected. So we're gonna do a console.log hi. Okay. Console.log hi. And I'm gonna open up here the inspector to check the developer tool. So here it's saying, if I refresh, it's saying hi. So the two files are connected. This is good, okay? Now we need to, here in our project, they're telling us to create this grid to, because right now, if you take a look to our project, everything is just one big square, but we want to split this big square into multiple pieces. So we want to make little squares inside of this big square, okay? And to do this, we're going to use JavaScript. They are telling us to use JavaScript, okay? So what we're going to do in here, First, we're going to use an add event listener, okay, that it has named document. So we're going to add an add event listener in our HTML in order to 
what you're gonna see. So the ad event listener here will be DOM content loaded. And why DOM content loaded? The DOM content loader will wait your HTML and CSS file loads in the web page, and then it's gonna start implementing the JavaScript. Otherwise, your JavaScript will try to work and the HTML and CSS won't, won't be prepared yet, so you might crash your website. This way, you've, you this is kind of explaining in a better way how the DOM content loaded works. And in here, we're gonna say console.log high for example so far okay so I'm gonna show you if I put this outside console.log hey we can see in here if I refresh it's saying hey first and hi only when the HTML file is loaded it, it's like microseconds we can barely see but this can crash your code so it's important that you start this way okay now let's start working with getting this board and inside this board we're gonna split into multiple divs okay so how can we get something I'm gonna let a uh, console.log high here just to check if it's still working okay but later on we can delete first I'm gonna create a variable called board and how can we get things if I do in here document dot query selector and we know that the name of this board is board so if I do here dot board and I close our JavaScript is giving to us this is the this is the result for this uh, this command that I run, document.querySelector.board is giving me this div and this is exactly what we want to capture, what we want to get in our JavaScript in order to manipulate and add some divs in here, right? So we're going to run this command, this document.querySelector, okay? So I'm going to create a variable called let board equals to document.querySelector, okay? And now we're going to add some styling. So how can we add some styling here? Basically, we're going to uh, use this CSS grid template columns property, where we're going to uh, specify the number and the width of columns in a grid layout. So we're gonna do like 16 times 16, 32 times 32. We're gonna split into, diff into multiple pieces our div, okay? So this is exactly what we're gonna do in our project right now, and I want you to see. So first I'm gonna use board.style because this is a style, board.style, grid template column, grid template columns actually. And here I'm gonna say that I wanna repeat 16 times one FR, okay? And let's see what this means. And I wanna do this for the column and I wanna do this for the row. So here, columns and rows, okay? So let's refresh our project. If I refresh in here, now if I hover, we have 16, do you see? Now our big square is, our board is divided in 16 times 16, okay? So we have some boards in here, okay? We have 16 columns and 16 rows, okay? And we can change this number. Sorry, I put here 15, right? It should be 16, but doesn't matter. We, we were gonna change this number. So right now it's 16, 16. Okay, so, so far we're doing what they're expecting us to do. Now we need to make these divs, to make this 16, 16 into a real div. So what are we gonna do? Uh, actually this, all of this, I'm gonna put in a function. I think it will be easier. I'm gonna create a function here called create board. Okay, and we're gonna do all of this inside. What we want, we're gonna receive a size, okay? So let's make this uh, better. Instead of using the number 16, we know in the future that we're gonna change the 16 to a number that the user want. So to do this, we have to change here the quotation mark to back tips. And here we're gonna, instead of 16, we're gonna uh, use dollar sign size, curly bracket signs. Okay, so for example, if I call here the program create board and I pass the number 16, it remains the same. Okay, it's gonna happen the same thing. Anything change it. Okay, we have here 16 uh, columns and 16 rows. And the good thing about creating a function is that if I wanna increase here to 32, for example, it will be dynamical. So now we have 632, do you see? Now we have small squares inside, okay? So now for this big board, we're gonna create squares. So how can we do this? First, we need to know the size. So we're gonna create here a variable called amount that actually we need to know how many divs we're gonna have. So we're gonna create a, a variable called number of divs and it will be size times size, right? Because this will give us, if we have two columns and two rows, this means that we have 
for two times two, four divs. So here we're gonna do size times size. And we're gonna loop through every div to create a div. So here we're gonna say let i equals to zero, i less than num divs, i plus plus, okay. And for every iteration, we're gonna create a new div. So now we're gonna make these divs uh, actually exist, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new div. I'm gonna do let div equals to document dot create element. We have this if we wanna create a new element and here you say the name of the tag you wanna create. In our case, we wanna create a div, okay? Then if we wanna add this div in our code, we need to use this element dot insert adjacent element. So if we wanna insert something, so if we wanna have this div inside of our board, we need to use this function, insert adjacent element, and we're gonna say before end, okay? So we're gonna do what? We, we're gonna say board, because we wanna insert this div in our board, insert adjacent element, we wanna put in before end, and what we wanna add, the div, okay? I'm gonna put in here the color of the div. I'm gonna change the color of the div for yellow because I wanna show you how it works. Background color equals to yellow, for example. I wanna show you how it is. So if I refresh in here, now if you take a look, every little div here, do you see if I hover? It's in yellow and we can get every little div, okay? So we kind of created here all the divs dynamically. All right, so the first part we did. Now, before we move on with this hover effect, I wanna work with the input of the user. So let's see how we can do this. Before, remember, let's add stage all and add in our history here. So I'm gonna put create, uh, create board function, okay? And that's it. So how are we gonna ask the user for an input? So basically we're gonna use something that we saw in the previous project, that is the window.prompt. Okay, so we're gonna use the prompt to ask the user for an input. And then we need to check if it's uh, greater than zero and less than 100, okay? This is the on the maximum of 100 that we can accept. All right, or if the user type in something. So this is something that we're gonna do. I'm gonna create a function here called get size. All right. And in here, we're gonna use this prompt. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a variable called choice, for example, of the user or input. Okay, and I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna use this function here, prompt. Okay, so we're gonna display here prompt. And I'm gonna say, give me a size or like what will be the size of the board, okay? And I'm gonna call this function in here because I wanna show you. So here, get size, okay? And let's see how it works. So if I refresh, it's asking us what will be the size of the board, okay? And you can put here any number as you want. But uh, we need to check, okay? And what we're gonna do, if input it's equals equals an empty message. This means that we're going to ask the user again. Okay, this means that this is, we're gonna display a message actually. So how can we display messages? Here underneath the button, I'm gonna put a paragraph with a class or an ID equals to message, message, okay? And it will be empty in the same, in the first time. Then in here, I'm gonna call this paragraph let message equals to document dot query selector uh, hash message. Here we don't need the hash actually, just a the ID message. Here we need the hash. And if the user don't type in anything, I'm gonna say message and we're gonna use a function that has name inner HTML, okay? That will add a text in this paragraph. And we're gonna say please provide a number, okay? Else if the user typing a number that it's less than zero or input greater than 100, this means that he's not providing the correct number. So we're gonna say message.innerHTML equals to provide a number between one and 100, okay? And else, we're gonna say a successful message. We can say message.innerHTML saying 
now you can play, for example. All right. And one thing that is important, we're gonna add an event listener. We only we only wanna call this get size if the user click this button select here. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna say on click. We have this function in here, and we're gonna call the function get size. So here we're gonna do get size. Okay. And if we save in here, that's it. So let's see. If I refresh, everything working fine. If I click select and I put anything, it will make this message, please provide a number. If I click again and I put the number minus one, for example, and I click enter, it will say provide a number between 100 and 1 and 100. If I put here 1000, it will give you the same message. And if I put here 32, it will say now you can play. Okay? But one thing is important. We need to get the size that the user put in here. So to do this, actually, I'm going to undo what I did in here. And we're going to add an event listener in our main.js. So in here, what are we going to do? I'm going to add an event. I'm going to create a variable for the button. So let btn pop up is equal to document dot query selector. And I want to grab this button here, the pop up button. So hash pop up. And I'm going to add an event listener. So btn pop up add event listener. If we click in this button, I want to trigger a function, okay, that will get the size of the board. So here I'm going to create a variable size and I'm going to call the function get size, okay? After we get the size, I'm going to use here create board and I'm going to use this number size in here. The default for the size will be 32, but if the user actually, I'm going to change here to 16. This will be the default. But if the user want to create the size with his own number, it will be here, create size. Okay, so let's test. Let's see if it's working. If I refresh here, we have the border. All right, we have the, the board here with 16. But if I select, click here, select, and I put 64. And if we get it now in here, it should change the color, the size, but it's not changing. If I put here 32, now we have this. Okay, let's see what is happening in here. So I was working in here and I saw that we forgot to do something to update. Here in the else, we need to return the input, okay? Otherwise, we won't say to our function what is the size that we're receiving, okay? So now if I refresh here and I play around, for example, now we have 16, but if I put in here 32, for example, and if I hover again, now it's smaller, okay? So now it's working. So now let's work with actually adding some content here, right? Like drawing some actual stuff in here. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna change, I'm gonna remove this background color, okay? And right now we're gonna use an add event listener that when we hover these blocks, it's gonna start drawing, okay? So here we're gonna say div.addEventListener and the event listener for hovering is the mouse over, okay? And so far, I'm going to create a function here. In the future, we can change for other colors. But I want to change the background color for this div to black. Okay, because I want to show you how it works. Equals to black. Okay, so let's see. If I refresh and I start drawing here, now it's coming black. Okay, so this is something that we, we can start working. If I change here to 32, for example, now I can draw more, okay? So we're kind of adding the idea of, of drawing. Now we can work with these buttons, okay? So depending on the button we click, it's gonna trigger something. So if it's, if it's black, we're, we're gonna draw in black. If it's random, we're gonna draw in a random color, okay? So here, instead of calling this function, I'm gonna do Control Z. And here I'm gonna create a, fi a, a function called color div, okay? And this will be the function we're gonna call. So we have a couple of things to do. First, we're gonna create a function called uh, set color, okay? And this color, we're going to receive a choice. So for example here, we're gonna receive if it's black or random. Okay, so here I'm gonna say color choice. And here we're gonna set the color equals to color choice, okay? And what is color? Here in the top, we're gonna create a global variable called color, and the global variable, the default will be black, so, okay? This will be black. So color choice, blah, 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 and we're gonna call this function color choice in here. So on click, we're gonna call the function color choice, and we're gonna pass that it's black. Color, set color, sorry. Set color, 
set color and here I'm gonna say black actually we need to use single quotation mark Black. So far the random is the same here, we're just gonna send the word random. To select the color random, we're gonna do this in the future, right? Right now we're just gonna see this set color random. And now we're gonna set here color choice. So now we need to check, okay? So if color choice is equals equals random, what we wanna do? We wanna get our div, okay? And how can we get this div? We're gonna use the word this dot style dot background color okay so it's gonna get this particular div that we're working and we're gonna change the background color to something else and what will be the background color i searched here for this hls random colors that we can create okay and the hls is basically another way of representing colors like we have rgb a hexadecimal those things so here this is the math that we, we need to do to get a random otherwise else we want to populate with a background color black. So here's style dot background color equals to black. Okay, so that's pretty much what we have to do. And here we're calling the function color div. So let's see if it's working. If I refresh in here and I start playing, for example, I click here in random and it's not working. So let's see what is going on. So like we can see in here, he is complaining about the color choice that does not exist. And what is the problem? Here, we need to remove the word let, okay? And then it will work. So I refresh in here, and now it's complaining again about this color choice. Set color, and here we're calling color choice. Here, sorry, it's not color choice. Here's just color, because this is the name of the global variable, right? And let's see if now it works. Now we're drawing with black. And now if we change to random, it's drawing with random colors, okay? So this part is working. Now let's work with the reset. So how can we reset? We're gonna get, what is the idea of reset? We're gonna go and get all the divs and we're gonna make it white again. And how can we get all the divs? We can use this array.prototype for each. So the for each method provides a function once for each array element. So for example, here we have this array, A, B, C. We do array dot for each element console.log element and in every iteration we're getting one element of the list. So we're gonna have a list of all these little squares in here and we're gonna make them white. So I'm gonna create a function here, set reset, reset board, for example, okay. And we're gonna get all the divs. So here I'm gonna create a variable called divs. And I'm gonna do the document dot query selector all divs. Okay. And we're gonna do divs dot for each. And here I'm gonna say div. And in every div, I wanna change the background color. So div dot style dot background color equals to white again and then we need to add this function in the bottom so here in the on click event we're gonna use the reset board function okay let's see if it's working so if i refresh and i start drawing here if i click reset it's resetting everything okay so it looks pretty nice right now we can handle that what if we want to start drawing in the middle we can't right because Every time we hover here, it's gonna start drawing. So what we can do is, let me remove this. We can create a global variable where we click. It's go, if we click, it's going to enable us to start writing. Otherwise, if we click again, it will enable. So it will be like a switch, uh, a switch function, okay? So how can we do this? Before we move on, let me, like a good practice, I'm gonna stage all the changes and I'm gonna do call working with the buttons, for example, and I'm gonna commit, okay? So now let's work with the final part of the project. So basically, what are we gonna do? Here in the top, we're gonna actually, we're gonna create a global variable called let click, and we're gonna set to false, okay? And what will be the idea? We're gonna do document, oops, document.querySelector, and we're gonna get the body, okay? And we're gonna add an event listener. So add event listener, click, okay? And we're gonna trigger a function. What we're gonna have in this function, we're gonna check if this click was on the bottom or not. If it wasn't on the bottom, this means that we are making, we're allowing the user to start drawing. 
if it was in the button, we won't change anything. So how can we check if it was in a button or not? Here we're gonna pass the event E, and we're gonna do, sorry, not in here. In here we're gonna pass the event E, and here we're gonna do this following. If E.target.tagName it's different than button, all lower, button, all capital, sorry. What are we gonna do? We're going to change the click to the different position of click, okay, equals to click. So what we're saying, if click is true, it will be not true, so it will become false. If it's false, it will be not false, so it will become true, okay? And we're gonna display a message to tell the user that he's able to draw. So here I'm gonna create a new paragraph, I'm gonna give an ID draw, for example, okay? And here I'm gonna get this draw here. So I'm gonna say let draw equals to document dot query selector hash draw okay and we're gonna check if click is equal to true we're gonna display a message draw dot inner html equals true now you can draw all right else draw dot inner html you're not allowed to draw for example here we can change you are allowed to draw and you're not or you can do whatever you prefer okay and we need to change the button in here so this if all this if statement will be inside of another one so we're gonna do if click so if click is equal to true this will letting us do this this is allowing us to change okay so let's see if i refresh now I hover, nothing's changing, but if I click, it's gonna display this message, now you can draw. If I stop clicking, you're not allowed to draw, and if I click again, I can draw again, okay? But for example, I, let me reset. If I'm not allowed to draw, and I click here in random, it's not changing, and I can do here like an eye, I can stop, I can draw another eye, for example, and then I can make a happy face, okay, here. So it's a really nice way of drawing whatever you want okay this is pretty much what we have to do all right now we just need to submit all of this in our uh in our github so here stage all finish the click to draw for example and i'm gonna click here to commit to files i'm here gonna say cancel here and now if you take a look here we have five pushes so we have all of this in our local repo now we have to send to github so i'm gonna click in here push and if we go back here to our GitHub and I refresh, all the changes now are in here. So it took us some time to do, okay? And it's storing all the changes that we did. To finish, don't forget, you need to go to settings, click on pages, and change here the branch to main and save, okay? This is pretty much for this project. I hope you enjoyed this content and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. If you would like to have full support from programming expert via Telegram group and group coaching, check the description below.